I couldn't tell you where my MagSafe charger is. I don't use it. I don't need it. I don't care about it. It is just an extra charger that stays in a bag somewhere and just hopes and longs that one day I find it again. Look, okay, I remember the days of my very first MacBook. It was a white, full, white plastic 2008 MacBook. I think it was just called the MacBook back then. You know what that thing had that no other laptop had was a MagSafe port for charging. It was the coolest thing on the block. Everybody loved it. Apple just, that was, that was just innovation back then, you know? And so the MagSafe port continued. It, um, it was in my MacBook Air, my 2013 MacBook Air before I went to college. Again, fantastic port. People absolutely loved it. There was always the laptop charger, just boom, click, because the competition back there, again, back then was with random Dell chargers and big barrel connections and big different proprietary chargers for laptops, but Apple had MagSafe. And if you had a MagSafe charger, you, had, you could charge any Apple laptop. It was just, it was great. Then, Moving in to when I finally started getting into video editing, I got my first MacBook Pro in 2016, and that was the version with just four USB-C Thunderbolt ports, zero MagSafe. They got rid of the MagSafe in 2016, and people were just distraught. People just losing their minds over this thing, because why in the world would Apple do such a thing and get rid of something that we all loved and cared about so, so much? And then people kind of I forgot about it, I guess. The next four years of Apple MacBooks were just all USB-C ports always, all the time. And then USB-C and Thunderbolt ports started becoming a lot more popular. A lot became a popular way to charge headphones, a popular way to charge phones in general, a popular way to charge every single device on the planet. But people were still calling out Apple every single day of the week saying, hey, bring the MagSafe back, bring the MagSafe back, bring the MagSafe back. And then in 2020, when Apple released this line of MacBook Pros, they finally brought the MagSafe port back. And some people were just over the moon excited. Wow, this is incredible, great, MagSafe is back. There's an HDMI port on this thing, but like MagSafe, MagSafe, MagSafe. I'm not gonna lie, I was one of the people that was excited about MagSafe coming back to the MacBook too. But in the four years since this version of laptops has been around, and in the four years I've had several iterations of between the M1, the M2 Pro, the M3 Max, I couldn't tell you where my MagSafe charger is. I don't use it, I don't need it, I don't care about it, it is just an extra charger that stays in a bag somewhere and just hopes and longs that one day I find it again. And just for this video, I went and found it. Here is my MagSafe charger for my MacBook. It has this 96 watt hour power brick that came with the laptop and a USB-C to MagSafe charging cable, which is great. It's such a cool thing. It is very nice. but. The reason for this video is the fact that I just wanna talk about how Apple killed the MagSafe port and why it is that I don't really care about it at all. See, I was on Threads the other day, which I recently started a Threads account just to talk more about tech and cameras and YouTube stuff because Instagram for me is kind of more of a family, personal thing. Not really sure how I'm working it. Anyways, I was on Threads and this is Tech Today posted, I want to, apologize to Apple for being amongst the many of us begging them to bring the MagSafe back to the MacBook Pro. We were wrong about that one, my bad. I never use it. You can get rid of it again and put a USB-C port there instead. Whoops, and proceeds to show a picture of the MagSafe port. And I read that and I was like, this guy's got a great point. Granted, he was getting roasted in the comments because a lot of people didn't agree. He goes on to say, let's be honest, the MagSafe is the lightning cable of MacBooks. Thinking about finding my MagSafe cable makes me feel the same emotions I feel when looking for a lightning cable to charge my keyboard. Absolute dread. He said, Mag MagSafe was glorious because before it existed during a time when it made sense. When we lost it, we mourned it. When it came back, it did so with things that had changed and tech was just different. USB-C became mostly a universal thing. 
And he's exactly right. I had USB-C cables everywhere. What's the point of having a MagSafe? And that brings us to today's video of what exactly do I use instead? This is a 140 watt charger from my friends over at Tobin One. This thing is just incredible. And right now it's on Amazon for $69 with a $20 off coupon, which means 50 bucks for this charger. It is smaller than my 96 watt hour Apple charger. And it also comes with two cords, a USB-C to USB-A and a USB-C to USB-C. And the USB-C to USB-C is rated for the whole entire 140 watt charging. Now, what is 140 watt charging and why does that even matter? You see, when I travel, when I go places, when I'm in my camera bag, I like to bring one charger. There's no reason to bring multiple chargers for multiple devices. I like to just bring one charger. And I pulled out a couple of the devices that I typically will charge when I'm on the road. This right here, Rode Wireless Pros. I'll typically plug these in a charger for a wedding day. Same concept with this small rig V99 watt hour battery. I'll plug this in to the USB-C port, charge that thing up. This right here is a DJI drone also charges with USB-C. This right here, this is my MacBook. This charges with USB-C as well. Now, the thing with all of these devices that's cool is they all charge with USB-C. And obviously there's multitudes of other devices, but I'm just gonna kind of pick out the big four that I tend to charge a lot while moving. The thing with chargers and the thing with wattage hours and things like that, people know this, but a 96 watt hour power brick is not going to charge a MacBook at full speed because the MacBook requires 140 watt to be full fast charging. Whereas a simple five watt power brick is not gonna charge this 99 watt hour V-mount battery because this V-mount battery can quick charge at 65 watts. But a 140 watt charger like this Tobin One charger can charge my MacBook at 140 watts fully. It can charge this small rig V99 watt hour battery at 65 watts fully. It can charge the Rode Wireless Pro at I believe five watts fully. And it can charge the DJI Mini 4 Pro at whatever wattage that it takes as well. So buying a 140 watt charger means that all of your devices are covered through quick charge all the way down the line, no matter what. And I love having just this thing in my bag when I travel. See, recently my wife and I had a baby. I know, congratulations, it's great stuff. And the only charger that I brought to the hospital room was this 140 watt hour charger because I can plug my phone in on the USB-A port, charge it 30 watts, fast charge my phone. I can plug the my laptop in to the USB-C at 140 watt. I could charge my camera. I could charge every single thing that I owned just on this one power brick in the hospital room. And the cool thing about the Tobin One charger is it comes with two cables. So it comes with a USB-C cable and it comes with a USB-A cable. Now, a negative side is these are only three foot cables, which I wish there was a six foot option, but it's $50 charger, so it is what it is. But it does come with the two cables. Now there is loads of competition out there. Anchor makes a bajillion different chargers. And I think Anchor's pricing strategy is mainly just to confuse you on what the heck you actually want when you go to look for a charger. But from what I've seen, especially scrolling through Amazon, this is the most inexpensive 140 watt three-way charger that also comes with two cables out there on the market. So I've been using this for my MacBook for about a month now. I've been using this for everything for about a month now, just because it is so convenient, so easy to use. I've always got it with me, I've always got it around, and it charges every single device that I own. Whereas my beloved MagSafe cable with Apple charger, after this video, it's gonna go back in some box somewhere and I probably won't see it again until I go to sell this MacBook and include the charger cable with it. That's just how it is because technically, I guess I could bring this and this to charge my devices when I travel, but why when the Tobin One 140 watt charger charges faster and charges every single thing? So, I don't know, what do you think? Do you completely disagree with the thread that the MagSafe charger is useless or the MagSafe port's useless? I would personally rather have another Thunderbolt port there. I think that would be incredible. What I would really like to have on this MacBook is a micro SD card reader, but 
you know, that's just, that's just a thing that maybe we might not get one day. So let me know your thoughts. Is the MagSafe cable still useful for you? Am I just a complete idiot for agreeing with this thread? Or um, do you feel the same way? Do you also wish that they would just kill it off completely because it had a good run, but it's just no longer needed? So I'll catch you guys on the next video. You can check out the Tobin One 140 watt charger on Amazon. I'll probably throw a link in the description just because this thing has been awesome. So yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next video. See ya.